Hello you lovely lot, my name is Max, welcome back to my YouTube channel and another Nottingham Forest match preview. Today talking about a difficult away trip down to the south coast to face the current team bottom of the Premier League, Southampton, under new manager Nathan Jones. If you're new around these parts, these videos go as follow and we start by providing some context to the season thus far for our position. We then start talking about some of the stats and key players, followed by an analysis of their tactics and then an overall score prediction. So if you do enjoy this kind of stuff, don't forget to drop a like on this video, subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you don't miss a single match preview or the transfer scout reports coming up throughout January. With well, that being said, let's start talking about Southampton. Before I do that though, I do believe I owe you guys an apology. The Chelsea match preview never ended up coming out on Sunday evening. Unfortunately, when it came to me editing the video after I'd recorded it, the footage had gotten corrupted and I didn't have enough time to then re-record the video and then re-upload it and all that kind of stuff. Unfortunately, that meant the video didn't come out. I was contemplating releasing the audio as like a little podcast version, but I just didn't think it would really live up to the standards of the other match previews that are currently out on the channel so apologies that didn't come out hopefully it's going to be the only slip up for the season that being said though let's actually start talking about Southampton so as we usually do, let's kick this video off, starting by talking about some context and providing a bit of background as the season thus far for Southampton as we approach the halfway stage. And it has been a pretty turbulent last two or three years down on the south coast for Southampton. They do have new owners who have shown real initiative and in looking to invest into the club and redevelop this squad to potentially stay in the Premier League. But last season, they did finish 15th in the Premier League and were only five points clear of the drop zone as they sort of dropped slowly closer and closer towards relegation over the last two or three seasons and that form really did continue into the beginning of this season just 12 points on the board and five defeats on the bounce in the Premier League for the Saints. This has led to the sacking of Ralph Hasenhutl and Nathan Jones, the former Luton manager, being appointed over the course of the last three games. And for Forrest, this seems like a really important period of the season, this game against Southampton and the subsequent six or seven weeks of the season. Some really big must-win games against teams in and around the same area of the table as us. And this would be a really good opportunity for us to pick up our first away win of the season with just one goal on the road this season. This is a really good opportunity to pick up some points on the road. So with that being said, let's start talking a little bit about the stats and dissect what's been going wrong for Southampton this season because I think their stats make for really interesting reading as to what's not good and what is actually quite good in this team. So when we look under the hood and at more of the general stats for the Southampton team in their attack, they look actually quite good. They're 14th in the Premier League for expected goals and take around 11.5 shots per 90 minutes, a mid-table value that puts them above the likes of Brentford and Chelsea. What's really letting them down though is the amount of goals that they score. They're 16th in the Premier League, four goals scored at the moment. And on the surface of things, that may look like a team that's probably going to be safe come the end of the season. Certainly the stats on the hood suggest they are most certainly not the worst team in the Premier League at the moment. But when you look at general trends in the Premier League, a lot of teams are underperforming their expected goals at the moment. Southampton being one of the biggest defenders. If we look at the teams who are underperforming their XG the most in the Premier League this season, it's the likes of Wolves, West Ham, Everton, Southampton and ourselves in and around that ballpark. All teams sort of occupying the lowest regions of the Premier League. It's been a really big trend for lower Premier League teams this season to underperform their expected goals, to underperform in their finishing. And it really feels like this is the area in the January window where Southampton really need to improve and bring in some quality in the final third. So it really is little wonder why the likes of Tuba Akpom, Beto and Terra Moffi have been linked to the club as strikers since the window opened a couple of days ago. And it really does feel like this is the area to improve in considering the real lacklustre quality they have in this position's recent signings like Joe Rebo, Theo Walcott, Adam Armstrong, really flattering to deceive in that position. And you really need some goals down that end of the table, I think Southampton lads. And I do think some of these players could offer something. I think Turamoffi and Beto from Udinese, two of the players who are quite heavily linked to Southampton at the moment, they're players who are generally overperforming their expected goals, which is something you really, really need. They're players who are really good at getting the ball in the box, receiving the ball in the box, and actually contribute a fair amount defensively, which for a team who have historically had really active pressing forward to do a lot of defensive work is a really useful asset. So I definitely think Moffi and Beto could be two players really worth looking at, and you can see why they've been linked. So when we 
flip things around, defensively, Southampton have again been pretty mixed. Some of their general underlying stats are quite good. Their expected goals is around mid-table, which is actually less conceded on expected goals than Brentford and Liverpool. And again, in terms of shots conceded, they concede around the same amount as Manchester United per 90 minutes. But where they really fell is in the actual hard line numbers. Goals conceded, the third worst goal conceding record in the Premier League this season. And I hate to say this because I'm a big fan of his. I think he's been doing really well in the Football League over the last couple of seasons. But the goalkeeper, Gavin Bazunu, has been a big part of the reason as to why Southampton have struggled so much defensively. He maintains the worst save percentage in the Premier League at the time of recording, which is 55%. And when we look at post-shot expected goals, which really shows the value of goalkeepers and their ability to prevent goals, he is also bottom of the Premier League. I really think this is a position where, again, in the summer, they should, uh, sorry, in the winter window, they should be looking at a potential loan move, maybe a player with six months left on their contract. A couple of names I would suggest, maybe Martin Dupravka from Newcastle. He's recent return from his Manchester United loan spell where he didn't really get any minutes. I'm not sure if he's allowed to be loaned back out again, but I think that would be a really good pickup for Southampton. Or someone like Jan Sommer from Borussia Mönchengladbach, six months left on his contract could potentially be a cheap asset to pick up in goal. Obviously, you're not kicking Bazunu out. I think he's got really good potential. He's still really, really young for a goalkeeper, but an experienced top-level goalkeeper who can come in and hopefully give him a little bit of mentorship, put an arm around the shoulder, all that kind of stuff. I think that'd be a really good pickup for Southampton. Either way, Southampton's issues this season aren't really anything new, especially if you are a Forest fan. They don't score enough goals and they concede far, far too many. I definitely think those some of those potential signings could really bolster this squad and probably pick them out of the relegation zone come the end of the season. I do like Nathan Jones as a coach. I think he was probably brought in at the wrong time. I think they should have at least stuck with Hassan Utal or brought someone in until the end of the season, then given Jones the entire summer to work with the squad, help build a team that could potentially fight for mid-table in the Premier League next season. But that's by the by. He's at the job. He's doing as the best job that he can with the resources at the moment. And I am interested to see, if you are a Southampton fan, by the way, what you think of maybe some of these targets I've suggested and some of the targets that you guys are maybe looking at for the January window. With that being said though, let's start talking about their tactics in a little bit of detail. We spent quite a long time talking about their stats, so it's only going to be a brief one. And it's mainly going to be talking about the transition from Hassan Hutel's style of play to what potentially we could be seeing with Nathan Jones in the future and what we've seen in the early days of his tenure. Okay then, so we've moved over to the tactics board section. As you can see, we've got up Southampton in the red, particularly under Ralph Hasenhutl in a shape that I think is quite heavily associated with him as a coach and Southampton over the last two or three years. This very wide, very vertical 4-4-2 shape or 4-2-2-2 if you're that way inclined. And this was a side that was really characterized by high intensity work rate and a really aggressive press, particularly in the final third. When we look at something like passes per defensive action, which is a really good metric for determining the intensity of a team's press, they were consistently under Hassan Hutel in the top five or six teams in the Premier League over the course of his tenure. And then this dovetailed really well with quick transitional football, their ability to drop back into a really good shape press intently, win the ball back, and break out in a quick vertical shape that played from back to front really quickly. If we look at things like passes per attacking sequence and the direct attack speed of the side, when we look at style comparisons, Southampton were a team that didn't put too many passes together per attacking sequence, but attacked with lots of pace and verticality in their system. Of course, those things have changed. Nathan Jones has come in as the new Southampton manager, and there has been some immediate changes on the field. Now, I'm going to caveat this little bit of the section by saying Jones has only taken part in three Premier League matches as the coach of Southampton. So it's a very small sample size of data that we're using, but it does give us a little bit of an inkling into maybe what we can expect down the line for Southampton. The biggest drop off really for Southampton has been in their press intensity. When we look at the metrics at things like passes per defensive action, they've dropped from around 12 to around 18 passes 
per defensive action. That's a huge drop off. That's dropped them from around 6th or 7th in the league at the beginning of the season to comfortably in the bottom third of Premier League teams for passes per defensive action. Again, it's really seen a step down in the intensity of their press. And when we look at with the areas of the pitch where they are pressing and when they're winning tackles, where they're taking touches, it's shifted from being more in the middle third and attacking third to being more in the middle third and the defensive third. It's stepped back their intensity and their engagement of the opposition. And I think this could potentially be a sign of things to come. They've shifted to a more pragmatic defensive system. They've also shifted to playing a variation of different systems. They've used three at the back more than they did under Hassan Hootel. And it's going to be really interesting to see how Jones galvanizes this team because it's not particularly pretty football that they're playing at the moment. And I can't imagine it's really motivated the Southampton players to be playing in this system. Now, historically, Nathan Jones has been so he's been pretty flexible in terms of the individual shapes on a game by game basis with his Luton team. They've played something like a 4-3-3 that we have on the board here. They've also spent some time playing in something closer to a 5-3-2 or a 3-5-2, something a bit closer to maybe what Forrest were playing last season. And he's shown that he's really tactically versatile. He can play teams that suck the ball into the midfield and then break out quickly on the counter-attack. Generally though, his teams have always been really solid defensively and have had a really good defensive base to then break out on with quick counter-attacking football. And whilst I think that he has really struggled initially with Southampton, I think there are still some similarities. The quick attacking football when they do get the ball, the defensive solidarity is maybe something they're looking to introduce with Jones as a coach because they were very prone to a thumping at the Southampton team under Ralph Hassan Hootel. I think it was for about three seasons in a row they were thumped 9-0 in a lot of their matches uh, in a match every season. So I think it's trying to add a bit more defensive stability with some of the principles that are already there, the quick attacking free-flowing football on the break that Southampton had under Hassan Hootel. Of course, if you are a Southampton fan, let me know in that comment section down below what you think of my analysis of the transition from Hassan Hootel into Jones. I think it's really hard to sit here and say, this is what they're going to do. This is how they're going to play under Jones because he's only had three league matches to show his mustard as a coach with Southampton. I think it's really difficult at the moment to sort of see what he's going to be doing with the team. But the initial signs show to it being much more of a basic defensive system that looks to maintain some of the free-flowing attacking principles that we had under Hassan Hootel previously. So in terms of a scoreline, I think this one is a really good opportunity. This game is a huge opportunity for Forrest to pick up their first away win of the season. Of course, we've scored just the one away goal over the course of the season. I think Southampton are primed to be a team that we can pick up some points against, hopefully elevate ourselves out of the relegation zone, and maybe even start a really good run of form over this really crucial six-week period of the season. I'm going to go for a 2-0 win for Forrest. I don't think Jones has done enough of a job to address the issues that Southampton are facing, and I think Forrest are a team generally ticking in the right direction under Steve Cooper. With that being said though, let me know your predictions of the scoreline for the Southampton and Forest match. Like I said, I've gone for a 2-0. Hopefully I've made the case for that. If you disagree, let me know in that comment section down below. And whilst you are down there, don't forget to drop a like on this video, subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you don't miss the match previews, the returning scout reports over the January transfer window and a couple of other videos I've got in the pipeline for the next couple of months. With that being said though, thank you so much for watching. I'm again very sorry for the lack of a Chelsea match preview, but hopefully Hopefully this one has more than made up for it. Enjoy the game if you're going down as well. It's a long trek, so enjoy the game if you're going down there, Reds. I will catch you later.